Uh, this message came to me quite unexpectedly, but one has to be faithful to the Lord on these things and make the second decision. If the first decision isn't quite right, I felt that uh, three messages on the spiritual health of the church with the third message focus on prescription uh, was sufficient and what God desired that I would share and that we would return back to John 3.16. But in reality, um, this is the fourth message that will look on the spiritual health of the Christian church, the Christian community, and that once again we'll be looking at prescriptions. And I'm doing so because God has intervened by bringing uh, two brothers, one a pastor, one a brother who's been walking with the Lord uh, faithfully for quite some time, and uh, also quite honestly reading some old sermons and uh, a men's study on a Friday uh, really uh, just brought it all together for me. It said that these messages are incomplete without this fourth one, and I do believe this will be the last, but but who's to say about these matters? And, and here's, the, here's the part that I missed out. And there's two aspects of this. And it's just so important. Again, that others brought to me. The scriptures, two brothers, and some old sermons. And here's the point. And I return back to the prescriptions because it is my desire more than anything else is to help souls reach heaven, that this world would not get the best of us. And so here are the two facts that God wants you to know, wants me to know. It is a terrible thing for a man to get behind a pulpit and attempt to preach the word of God without God being with him. Ministers of old would see that as heresy, particularly Daniel Rowland. He, he made the point that orthodoxy was not enough, but the Spirit of God needs to be with the man, that God needs to be with him. And Pastor Rowland took this very seriously. And the reason why he's saying it's heresy, it's like somebody taking Elijah's staff, you know, to try to perform a miracle without Elijah. It doesn't work. Thus, taking the word of God without the spirit of God being with you, you know what happens? It doesn't work. It's just a lecture. It's just a talk. And it's a dreadful thing. And there should be something no more, you know, the preaching of the word of God should be powerful. It should be illuminating. I'm not talking about emotionalism or devotionalism or anything of that nature. But I'm talking about where a man speaks with such great authority because he has lost himself, because he recognizes he's a herald of God. He's revealing the mind and heart of God, as I keep arguing. And what a terrible thing it is to try to rely on one's own merits or knowledge uh, or anything of that nature. Um, and it's just a talk. It's just a lecture. And so what do we need is we need ministers to be flaming ministers for the Lord where the, where the Spirit of God is with him. And Pastor Roland got this from Moses, again, where uh, Moses said, if you're not with me, Lord, well, then I don't want to go. And how comfortable we are in pastors and Americans that as long as our physical life is going well, then there's this presumptuous, we're presumptuous in believing that God is with us when he is not. And so we need to have the heart of Moses. We need to have the heart of Roland that says, Lord, if you're not in this, I, I, I don't want to do it. And then the second travesty is this. And this was really emphasized to me, again, by Christian brothers in an old sermon in the scriptures themselves, which is this. How dreadful it is for a congregation, for professing believers, to come together and not listen whether it's in a Sunday school class, a time of devotion before you begin some type of, uh, of, of activity in the name of the Lord, you know, some good works, you know, right before you're going to go off and serve the poor, somebody stands up and shares some scriptures with you and how terrible it is for you to say, yeah, been there, done that, know that, and not pay attention. How terrible it is for you to attend a Sunday morning service, an evening service, a weekday service, 
a prayer meeting, and you're just getting through it. You're not listening. Now why? Why? Why are many souls never going to reach heaven? What's happened? Well, we're not listening. And that's the great spiritual battle. I want to point to you in 1 Timothy, Apostle Paul says, listen, I was a blasphemer, I was a persecutor, but God was gracious to me because I was ignorant in my unbelief. Now, I want you to think hard about this because I've made this point when the uh, collision happened between Christ and Apostle Paul and Christ says to him, why, Paul, are you, or Saul, why are you persecuting me? And uh, Saul was persecuting the church, the sect of the way. He was imprisoning them. He was giving approval to the death of Stephen and many others, undoubtedly. And so there's this collision, but he says, listen, you're going to go to Straight Street and, and Ananias is going to come and see you, you know. But he's there for three days. He doesn't eat. He doesn't drink. And I always say that I think I know what Apostle Paul was saying during those three days. Lord, you are so right. And I was so wrong. Now, why? What? What? I mean, that's a nice thing to say. It's sentimental. It's sweet. But I think it's true because Apostle Paul says here, I was ignorant in my unbelief. But here is a man, here's a man who is well educated on the Old Testament. Here's a man who should have known better. And that's what I want you to see. He should have known better. As Christian people, we should know better. Uh, people are coming out of the womb claiming that they as, as if they know everything. Oh, I know everything there is to know about Christianity. I'm a Christian, you know. Well, have you really read your Bible? Have you really studied it? Do you really know what God is actually saying? Or is it, are you flippant about it? Don't you see what I'm saying? Our hearts have become diamond hard. We're not listening. We're comfortable living life the way that we choose to live it, expecting God to bless us. And so, like, look today, it's Super Bowl Sunday. Here it is, you know, in New Jersey, snowing like crazy. Churches are canceled. I just wonder how many of us professing Christians are going to spend hours, hours watching television before the big game, and then more hours watching the game. And, uh, and without complaints and with great excitement. Well, how can we do such a thing? How could we listen for so long? Well, because that's our appetite. That's what we desire. That's what we want. We don't have an appetite for the things of the Lord anymore. What I'm trying to say here is it, our issue is not just what we do. It's our nature. It's in our nature to not listen to the Lord. Instead, we pursue and listen to worldly passions. That's what our appetite is. That's what we need to repent from. Apostle Paul says, I was ignorant in my unbelief. He was presumptuous. He thought he knew everything there was to know. And he had great confidence that he was doing the will of God. Jesus said, you're going to be persecuted. And these people, when they persecute you, they think they're going to do God's will. He was speaking about Saul, the great apostle. And that's what our concern is. We are not listening. What a terrible thing that is. Just like Apostle Paul, who thought he knew everything, and then he was wrong about everything. Well, this is how I'm going to close this message. A brother gave to me a postcard, you know, a 3 by 5 card. And in it was from a Bible study from years past. And the brother keeps good notes, and he meditates on these things. I find him to be a very strong Christian man. Now, I don't say that to feed his flesh or anything of that nature, but I, aren't you grateful when you see how God has worked in people's lives? Don't you just say, oh, thank you, Lord, for bringing me people who know your son and, and who can help me and stir my soul and mature me, Lord. Thank you. And this brother kept his 3 by 5 card, and he, and he shared it with me. And I want to read it to you now, which will be the prescription for the things that I'm sharing with you right now. And let me, let me open it up so, you can, so I can read it to you. 
So what do you do when you're caught in the midst of a great storm? Well, this comes from a, the Bible teacher who was quoting a book from, uh, from Fear uh, to Faith by Dr. Martin Lloyd-Jones. And so here are four points, and then there's going to be seven other points that back that up to go into a little bit more detail. So point number one, as Christian people, what do we need to do today? What is the prescription? Are you ready? Brother and sister, child, you need to stop to think. You need to reason. You need to think these things through. Not just physically, not just what you see, but spiritually. It is very important. Think through all the scriptures where it says, where God says, and my people don't reason. They're not thinking. They're behaving like animals. Slow down, Christian. Slow down and think. Restate basic principles. In other words, God has revealed truths to you. He has shown you and I why the world is the way it is and the snares that go along our pilgrimage from earth to heaven. Stop and think about the principles and the truths that God has revealed to us in his word. It goes on to say, we must return to the internal and absolute principles. It is a great thing to reason your soul with things that uh, remain undisputed truths. Okay, principles that are, are, are not disputed. All right, so we are to walk in the spirit, not by the flesh. When we come to a congregate, when we come to a service, what are we seeking for? What are we desiring? Oh Lord, we want your spirit to illuminate our minds, to capture our hearts, to change our will, right? We, we are Christian people. We don't have confidence in ourselves, right? We need to go further than just saying, oh, I don't trust in my meritous works. No, brother, sister, we got to go further and say, Lord, we have complete confidence in you. We're not going to rely on our conscience. We're not going to rely on our thinking. No, we are going to rely on the truths that you've shared with us. Lord, by your spirit, we've been born again. And now, because of what you've done in our lives, we have the ability to carry out what you've told us to do. Even things like love our enemies, endure suffering. It's an amazing thing to be a Christian. So, what are we to do? Restate God's principles. Go back and look at the absolute principles, the things that are undisputed, mind you, in scriptures. Number three, apply the principles to the problem. How terrible it is for us to hear a sermon and say, and applaud the pastor, but never apply with the truths that the pastor preached on. It's killing our souls. So not only is bad preaching, in other words, getting into the pulpit, just trying to uh, bring about change by speaking words without God being with it, with you. Okay, not only is that terrible, but how terrible it is for us when a pastor is preaching to us in the spirit, and then all we do is applaud and judge the sermon, but we never humble ourselves and apply the truths that the preacher is telling us. Good theology is good application. All right? And if we're still in doubt, if we're still in doubt on what to do, commit the problem to God in faith. Come to him as a child. I, I keep making this argument from time and time again. That we are not to be mechanical. No, we are to see God as who he really is. That he's our father. And that he truly knows what's best. And so God... Uh, might bring things into our lives to humble us. And we have to thank him for that. But my primary point from this wonderful 3 by 5 card is this. We've got to stop and think what God is telling us, and we have to apply that truth. They are undisputed principles that God has communicated to us that you and I need to apply, such as, what's a main principle? Hey, don't be conformed to the to the, to this world. Don't be conformed by this world. Don't as as one 
you know, as as uh, as one pastor put it, don't you know the world is trying to mold you in its ways. Don't, don't allow to do that. You, you are to fight against that. No, when we say that we take our faith more seriously, take our spiritual health more seriously, what are we saying? Well, we need to stop and think. We are acting at rapid speed, and it's hurting our faith. We need to stop. We need to think. We need to apply. We need to think through Scripture. We need to trust Scripture far greater than our own thinking, our own conscience, and our own ideas. On the back side of this card, it says, Slow down. Slow down and understand. Slow down and understand the spiritual challenges that you're facing. Search the scriptures. Seek God. Do not neglect God's word. And not only is it the reading of God's word um, privately, but also within Bible studies. Fellowship is gathering together to talk about God. And don't neglect God's word during the Sunday service. By just sitting there, hope, hey, I, I want to get through this thing, you know. I don't want to be transformed by it. Now look at this third point. Crave the word. Crave the word. You know, how important is that? Indeed, the word of God is the oxygen to our soul. Don't make us the central character. Don't make us the central character. Now, what does that sound like? Remember in my previous messages, I got this from a Christian documentary that was focusing on what is happening within the evangelical community. And what's happening is, is we're expecting God to orbit around us when we need to be orbiting around God. Now, here it is. Uh, we're, we're getting this from a study. And it says, hey, hey, don't make yourself the central character. God is the central character. And it says here, Another point here is that um, uh, teach God's word. Disciple one another. It goes back to the fellowship. Fellowship is absolutely essential to the Christian life. Fellowship is what will help us stay on the narrow path. Fellowship is what will strengthen our soul. It is, it's a you know, it's really, I left it out when I was talking about one of the means of grace, right? We don't want to neglect God's word. That's a means of grace. A Sunday service, that's a means of grace. Well, I think fellowship, you can say, is a means of God's grace to keep our soul strong. And finally, it says here, hey, you can't be just hearers of the word. You have to be doers. And the point being is, not by the flesh, but by the Spirit. And so here's the point. We can't sit here. It is an absolute travesty for us to mechanically sit through a service and say, this has nothing to do with me. You know, preachers of old would say, you. They would, you. You need to hear this. You need to apply this. You need to confess your sins. You need to strengthen up, you know. You know, put on the armor of God. You need to put on the full armor of God. Instead, pastors say, we, you know, we need to do this. Well, yeah, that's true. But here's the problem when we try to, you know, make things, uh, you know, uh, more acceptable. You know, because if you notice, everybody's thin-skinned. How easily everyone is offended. It's absolutely amazing. Countless souls are going to perish in sin because they're so sensitive that they can't even listen. They're so easily offended. It is absolutely amazing. How dare God call me a sinner? You know, how dare he do that? Now, nobody will come out and say that, okay? No professing Christian will come out and say that, but that's exactly how you're behaving. How dare the pastor insult me? Well, hey, he's not insulting you. It's called conviction. It's called conviction. And when we're sitting here acting like philosophers, or we're just gaining information. I got news for you. That's not the Christian life. It's not. The Christian life is where we are born again and we're acting on the truth of God. We're not pretending, but we're acting because God has given us a new life. It's like breathing. Living the Christian life is like breathing. It's just oxygen. 
oh, I don't, don't think I'm becoming a Quaker. No, not at all. But I'm just pointing out that it's easy for Christians to love their enemies. It's easy for Christians to love their children. E even the ones that have gone completely off the rails. It's easy for Christian children to love their parents. It's easy for Christians to serve the poor. It's easy for Christians to attend a Sunday morning service and a Sunday evening service and a weekday worship service and a prayer meeting. It's easy for Christians to do those things. They have a nature for those things. They desire those things. Those are their appetite. Like the world will spend likely 8, 10, 12 hours watching television over a football game. That's their appetite. That's their nature. It's what they long for. The Christian wants to hear the word of God so they can go off and do it. And so that's my prescription. My prescription is this. Like a pastor shouldn't get in the pulpit without the Spirit of God being with him, you and I must not stop and think about what's really happening and not hear the word of God and just let it bounce off of us as if it doesn't apply to us. No. Good th application is good theology. And we do it because God redeemed us. His spirit resides within us. And that's why. So, what's the prescription to get to heaven? Well, the basic point is this, isn't it? I'm gonna, I, I need to say it again. I want to be very clear on this. Is to get to heaven, Christians along with everything that I've said, you need to think about everything that was put on the 3 by 5 card. You need to stop and think. You need to reason out God's truth. Think about the undisputed principles. Apply those truths. Earnestly seek God and, and in faith seek Him and give it to Him. If there's an ongoing problem where you don't seem to have victory over it. Come to God in faith and commit it to Him to help you. Stop making yourself the central character in your life. Christ is center. Focus on Him and what He has accomplished. And then you'll have great assurance. And you'll be able to live as a strong Christian. Oh, my dear friend, I hope I haven't rambled. I hope you see how these things have communicated are, are connected and I hope I've communicated it well but I'm going to stop here grace be with you